So discuss, to discuss some of the political issues the story is raising along southern and northern borders, let me bring in Chris Alexander. He served as Canada's Minister of Citizenship and Immigration for two years when Stephen Harper was Prime Minister. Before that, he was Canada's Ambassador to Afghanistan. So Chris Alexander, what should the government do in regards to, because this is a discussion that has really come up in this country, especially yesterday, we heard uh, from the NDP arguing that Canada should no longer, that calling on the federal government, on the Liberal government, to end the safe third country agreement with the United States. What sure. do you think? Andrew, I agree with the NDP on this. I think we should be suspending the safe third country agreement. And I think that's what the NDP is yes. calling for. Um, why? Because we put it in place relatively recently, 2002. It was after 9-11, uh, but less than two decades ago, on the assumption that asylum seekers, refugees would be treated equally on both sides of the border. And given that assumption, mm -hmm. we would insist that they make their claim in the first country they get to. Since Trump's travel ban on eight countries, and since his suspension of their refugee programs, reduction of their refugee flows, as well as now the abuse of children uh, as part of their immigration programs, I don't think we can say the US is holding up their side of the bargain. We, all signatories to the Convention on Refugees of 1951, have obligations under international humanitarian law to treat people who are vulnerable, who are the world's most vulnerable, mm -hmm. uh, in the right way. The United States is not doing that under this administration. We sus should suspend the agreement and receive the claims of those who are not getting a fair shake in the U.S. at our points of entry. The added benefit is that this would stop irregular migration into Canada. Because anyone Why is wants that? Because, and I think that's an important point to point out, and maybe you can explain this, but though, because you're not talking about the irregular, you're not talking about um, these border crossings that are not at a point of entry. You're talking about the point of entry crossings, a regular border crossing. Correct. Under the Safe Third Country Agreement, someone from Somalia or Mexico cannot make an asylum claim at a Canadian border crossing. That, they should have done that in the States. We consider the States a safe country. It's not a safe country for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we should accept those claims, uh, which would mean that people would no longer traipse across highways at Roxham or field and forest to get to Canada, do dangerous things as they did in the winter to get to our country. They would make the claim at the border. That would let us find out who's who, mm -hmm. whether they've made a previous claim in Canada, in which case they turn around, whether they're a criminal, in which case they turn around, or if their case has some merit, in which case they would make the claim. We need to do this, though, on the basis of uh, an understanding of what their volumes would be. More resources for the Immigration and Refugee Board would be required. More border uh, officers mm -hmm. for our very hardworking CBSA. But I think this would both uphold our obligations, renew our leadership on these issues in the world, mm -hmm. and stop this growing problem of irregular migration. So I, I, I do want to talk a little bit more about uh, Donald Trump and what you think of him and some of the rhetoric that he has been saying, but I, ha I have to bring up the 2015 election because I think some people might be watching you and listening to you now and, and thinking, you know, maybe part of the reason why there was a loss there was there was a sense from Canadians that maybe you and maybe the party was a little bit either tone challenged or tone deaf in some minds and, and too tough when it, come, when it came to, at the time, it was Syrian refugees. So what, what would you say to that? Well, I hope people will look back to 2015 and look at the real context of Canada's action under successive governments versus U.S. action. Because when I was minister over two and a half years, we brought many more, resettled many more Syrian refugees to this country than the Obama administration did. We were ahead of the game. We were the mm -hmm. first to announce of any country that 10,000 would be resettled within our borders. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in keeping with Canada's best traditions. Now we have a different administration that is doing even less and breaking even more rules with regard to refugees and asylum. We need to take different steps, and I don't think this government is doing enough. I, I also don't that is fully agree with, with my colleagues in Ottawa on this issue. You, don't, you're, you're call, you mean the Conservative caucus. You don't agree with them on this. Well, I don't know about the whole caucus, mm -hmm. but our leader and our spokesperson on immigration issues are not calling for suspension of the Safe Third Country Agreement. I respect them greatly, mm -hmm. but I think this is the only way forward. We're not going to get the United States to renegotiate this agreement anytime soon. We have much bigger fish to fry in the, bigger, in the bilateral relationship, NAFTA, escalating trade war. 
Suspending the agreement is something we can do now to stand on principle to protect people who deserve our protection. What do you think? How do you think Trump would react to that if the, the government suspended the safe third country agreement? Well, I, I, I'm almost positive he wouldn't understand mm -hmm. what we were doing and why we've done it. Uh, but I think he respects strength, principle, and a strong message. And we would be saying we're upholding 70 years, 100 years of international humanitarian law. He is not. Uh, I think he deserves to be called out on these issues. Why do you think um, the Prime Minister so far, the government seems reticent, reluctant, is, it, it does not seem to be considering this seriously. Maybe that will change as this migrant, this separation of children and their parents becomes more of a crisis. Why do you think um, the Trudeau government is not doing that? I'm not sure. Um, I think they've tried to be all things to all people on these issues. I think it's a policy of drift up until now. Uh, I think it, generally in the U.S. relationship, they've been talking to everyone, hoping the issue would go away, hoping NAFTA would be renegotiated and that things would, recru would revert to normal. I think we have to agree mm -hmm. with this president, things aren't going to be normal and we need to be standing on principle. It's our place in history and our place in the international, our reputation in the international community that's at stake. What, what do you make of uh, some of the things that he has had to say about the people that are crossing? He's used words like infested. He's used word, he's accused the Democrats of allowing um, immigrants to just pour into the United States. Well, his language has been totally inappropriate uh, from the beginning. He's used racist language. He's demonized national groups. He's demonized ethnic groups. He's demonized religions. That's totally unacceptable. And it's one of the reasons why we should be suspending this agreement uh, with this administration in office. Uh, at the same time, we need to recognize that the U.S. is in a different place from Canada. They have a long-term historical challenge of illegal, irregular, what we call out-of-status mm -hmm. persons, a large population from 10 to 15 million in the United States, who need, whose status needs to be regularized. In any country that has a population that large, whether it's Europe today or the United States, is going to have uh, some toxic politics associated mm -hmm. with that issue. There are better ways to deal with it, uh, and, and we should be pointing in the direction of those better ways because we do want to see the U.S. reform its immigration policy. It's been decades without a breakthrough on this front when Democrats were in power and Republicans. Uh, it's high time that they come to terms with this, but the practices that President Trump is championing are not the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, they are making a bad situation worse. And by suspending the Safe Third Country Agreement, we would be pointing that out. Uh, and I think... Uh, standing on the firm foundations we have in this country of, um, of, of, of proper treatment, openness to refugees, asylum seekers, and immigrants from all over the world. Chris Alexander, I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. That is Chris Alexander with me in studio. He was Canada's Minister of Immigration from 2013 to 2015.